All right, well, 2 Samuel chapter 2 is where we left off. We had um, uh, opened uh, with the first seven verses where David was anointed king over one tribe, his tribe, of which he is from. It's his bloodline, the tribe of Judah. And, uh, and then if you remember, Abner, I told you, Abner, uh, who is the general, he was the army general for Saul, who is now dead. Uh, he took it upon himself to replace Saul and appoint one of Saul's sons on the throne. But it's going to be on the throne of all the tribes, less Judah, because David's got Judah. And that's where we pick up the story. And it's an interesting story. Again, we'll see how far we get tonight. But I'm prepared at least to take us for, well, through chapter 4, if we get that far. But, right? Ho, ho, ho. So... Uh, would somebody uh, please read uh, 8, 9, 10, 11. But Abner, son of Ner, the commander of Saul's <clears throat> army, had already gone to Mahan, and Saul's son Ishbosheth. Then he proclaimed Ishbosheth king over Gilead, Jezreel, Ephraim, Benjamin, the land of the Asherites, and all the rest of Israel. Ishbosheth. Saul's son was 40 years old when he became king, and he ruled from Mahan for two years. Meanwhile, the people of Judah remained loyal to David. Okay, so what did uh, Abner do? He appointed the king. And it is, now your versions may say Ishbosheth or Ishbaal. Mm -hmm. um, and this is one of Saul's sons. And uh, we'll, we'll look at some of the names tonight, but Ishbosheth can either be translated as man of shame uh, or uh, master of men. Oh. Chances are it's master of men. Okay? Um, but uh, it, it's interesting. Uh, ish, anytime you see Ish, um, again, that's that's. That is man. When in Genesis you see when God made man, the word is ish, ish and isha, and that was um, Adam and Eve, and it was it's it's man and then taken out of isha. It's out of man was is the woman. Okay, uh, so uh, so it, ish ish baal uh, baal we say baal. Baal, even though there's a god named Baal, the, the word is master, which is what they called that god. Mm -hmm. they, they worshipped the master, Baal, Baal. And uh, so when you see it, though, Ish Baal, it's like man, master, or master of man. Uh, and it could be like, a, you know, it's like Naaman, your son Caleb, <coughs> leader of many. You know, my son's going to be a master of men. You know, chances are that's what Saul named. Okay. Uh, so he, he appoints Ishbal or Ishbosheth uh, as king. <coughs> and uh, he is 40 years old, it says, when he began to reign. And then we get a little information about David. How long did David reign over Judah? Seven years. Seven and a half years. Now this... Apparently, is before he becomes king over all of Israel. So he's he's still got you know at this point a long way to go before he becomes the king that we all know, King David. He's still not there. Okay, and um, it's interesting what happens next. Uh, there's a showdown between um, Abner. Now Abner, by the way, his name. Most times, when you see a B in English, it's more of a V or a BV pronounced in Hebrew. So it's actually Avner or Avner, and that means father of lights. Ner, like Nel, Ner Shel Pasach, Passover lights, like when we light the candles at Passover. I don't know if that, uh, that sounds familiar to you, but that's uh, Ner is light. And um, Avner, Av, We'd say Ab again, like like Abba, uh, okay. Aramaic for father, but it's actually Ava. Or we'd say Rabbi, but it's Ravi. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ravi. Um, so um, 
Avner is like Father Light, but more understood as Father of Lights, and it would be a description of God. The Heavenly Father is being a Father of Lights. Okay, so, in case you're curious. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> verse 12 to 17, somebody, this is weird. <laughs> Kind of sad passage. Abner, son of Ner, together with the men of Ishbosheth, son of Saul, left Mahanam, Mah yeah, that Mahanaim. Place, Go ahead. and went to Gibeon. Joab, son of Zariah, <coughs> and David's men went out and met them at the pool of Gibeon. One group sat down on one side of the pool, and one group on the other side. Then Abner said to Joab, Let's have some of the young men. Get up and fight hand to hand in front of us. All right, let them do it, Joab said. So they stood up and were counted off. Twelve men for Benjamin and Ishbosheth, son of Saul, and twelve for David. Then each man grabbed his opponent by the head and thrust his dagger into the opponent's side. And they fell down together, so that the place in Gibeon was called Helkath Hazarim. Okay, which means field of sword edges, or field of the edge of the sword. Helkat Hazarim. And um, so, what did you just see? Stupidity. Let's pour. Stupidity. <laughs> Let's pour. Right? Here, hold my beer. Right? Okay, I mean, right? Oh my gosh, useless death. Um, okay, so you've got. I, I, it, it's almost as if, you know. Um, did these guys know it was suicide? I mean, they pair off, and each, each guy's holding each other by the, by the hair, pretty much, and each guy's dagger, you know, I mean, I mean, did you not know that was gonna not end up well? I mean, all, all 24 guys died, right? And, um, but, you know, I, you know, you gotta think, I mean, do you remember, gosh, I mean, there was better strategy uh, in earlier chapters of the Bible, um, and it reminds me of, you, you think of, um, how wars used to be fought uh, on the battlefields, England, Scotland, ancient Scotland, England, you know, um, and even here, uh, y'all line up. And, and it was, this was like the honor and the, the correct way to fight and, and no hiding behind rocks and, you know, stand there and take it like a man, literally is what it was. And you stood there and, you know, the Brits are there and they all, in one straight line, all your guys were straight line. Yep. Fire. Yeah. And you stood there. And if you died, you died. And then it was your turn. Fire. <laughs> and you thought, what? And then somewhere, somebody finally thought of foxholes, trenches, <laughs> trees. <laughs> you know, that, that you know, where's the honor in this? This is really stupid. But I mean, that's when you read that. I mean, that's where my mind goes. Is that kind of? I go. That's not Geneva Convention garbage. You know. I'm sorry. You know. Sorry. We, we lose a lot of battles today because we uh, our our military is is commanded to abide by often a code of, of a conflict that is dangerous for them. Uh, you, you'd think our enemies created it on purpose. You have to fight like this. Now, ISIS can fight however they want. But you can't, you know, you have to do, you have to stand out there pretty much and say, here we are. I'm sorry. All right. So, you know, to me, it, this reminds me of almost like Roman blood sport. Mm -hmm. Everybody's oh, sitting around mm -hmm. watching these 24 men mm -hmm. kill each oh, other. Yeah. You know, yeah. hey, this is fun. That's right, yeah. So r rules of engagement mm -hmm. is what I'm referring to that are often. They're, uh, yeah. All right, so uh, now Joab, um, Yoav, again, Bs are more like Vs, Yoav, and anytime you see a Y, uh, generally that's the shortest uh, name of God, Yahweh, um, even if it's Y, but it's a y Yoav, and um, guess what that means? Father. Yeah, it would be yeah, Yahweh is Father. And that's his name. It, it would be like Yahweh. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
God is Father. Okay. So the two of them, you know, they, they meet at some big pool. Armies are lining up. Send us 12. We'll send you maybe our best 12, whatever, and we'll see who, who take, you know, they all die. Uh, and then, um, verse 7, battle then, you know, kicks up. Uh, 17, I mean, the battle was fierce that day. Abner and the men of Israel were beaten by the servants of David. All right. And, um, and then what? Verse 18, now watch. Somebody 18 to 23, please. Now the three sons of Israel were there, Joab and Abishai and Ashel. And Ashel was as fleet of foot as a wild gazelle. So Ashel pursued Abner, and in going he did not turn to the right hand or to the left from following Abner. Then Abner looked behind him and said, Are you Ashel? He answered, I am. And Abner said to him, Turn aside to your right hand or to your left, and lay hold on one of the young men and take his armor for yourself. But Ashel would not turn aside from following him. So Abner said again to Ashel, Turn aside from following me. Why should I strike you to the ground? How then could I face your brother Joab? However, he refused to turn aside. Therefore, Abner struck him in the stomach with the blunt end of the spear, so that the spear came out of his back, and he fell down there and died on the spot. So it was that. So it was that as many as as many as came to the place where Joab fell down and died stood still. Mm. All right. So um, the blunt. Back just a minute. Mm -hmm. um, on, the, on the twelve and the twelve, it talks about the servants um, of David. Are they talking about actual servants, so that in his mind he was not sacrificing a worthy man, or were they talking about people who were just uh, loyal, loyal to David? They would be. They, they, these these servants would. They're, they're servants of David, meaning they're they're in his army. They're okay. they're his soldiers. Yeah, they're they're soldiers. So it was so to speak. But not like a, a house guest. servant kind of a slave. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, good question. Um, uh, and then you know, seventeen. You know, they were beaten by the servants of David. So it was all the all these folks have pledged to be in David's service. You might say. Uh, so uh, there's three sons uh, that you find of one father. Uh, Zeruiah, or Zer, uh, Zeruiah, uh, and Joab, he's one of them, Joab, he's the commander, again, of David's army, and, uh, and then you find one of them, um, Asahel, um, uh, his name is made by God, roughly, uh, and he does what? He's running down. He's running down Abner. What happens? He does get killed. He's, he's closing in on Abner. He's swift as a gazelle. This guy's fast. He's just one of the, he's a cross country runner, that kind of guy. He just doesn't get tired. Abner's gone. Oh boy. He's probably a lot younger, you know, whatever. I can't outrun this guy. All right. But I can whoop him. Okay. And he pretty much calls out and says, What? Listen, go, listen. Can, can you go find some other guy, some other soldier? You know, you've killed, just strip the dead, just take his gear, okay? Right? That's what he said. No. The guy won't have it. He's, he keeps coming. He's closing in. And he's pretty confident. Pretty confident. Abner's confident. He's a confident fighter. He goes, I'm going to kill you. Is, is this really worth your life, boy? <laughs> and uh, it kills him. Yeah. With the blunt end of the, the spear, by the way. blunt yeah. end of the spear? So let me tell you how hard that guy hit that thing. Um, that, that I guess maybe as he's running, I mean, it was like he just goes, wham! And he just knows how to use a, a pole, and it goes out his backside. Okay? Just right through here, out his back. Holy cow. Um, and he dies. It's pretty gross. It, it, it's, you know, and, and, you know, often, again, the, the Bible is, is R-rated, if not X-rated um, <laughs> yeah, at times, it. but, again, it's because that is also humankind. You know, the Bible... Um, I appreciate that it, it records honest stories of, of uh, the reality of life and battle and and sin and conflict and that's what it is and this is the world uh, these are the people that God wanted to save he loves us anyway and he came to save us I mean this is good news right uh, 
So that's the overriding theme again of, of, of the word. And uh, then um, let's continue 24 to 28, please. But Joab and Abishai pursued Abner, and as the sun was setting, they came to the hill of Amah near Eah on the way to the wasteland of Gibeon. The men of Benjamin rallied behind Abner. They formed themselves into a group and took their stand on top of the hill. Abner called out to Joab, <coughs> must have swore to bow forever. Don't you realize that this will end in bitterness? How long before you order your men to stop pursuing your, their brothers? Joab answered, as surely as God lives, if you had not spoken, the men would have continued the pursuit of their brothers until morning. So Joab blew the trumpet, and all the men came to a halt. They no longer pursued Israel, nor did they fight anymore. All right, what happened there? Call the truce. There is it in the call to see fire. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, at one point, again, Joab, he and his guys are in hot pursuit, coming after Abner. Now, Joab does not know that Abner killed one of Joab's brothers. He does not know this, and you're going to find that he doesn't know it yet. But they're, they're they're coming on, they're hot on their heels, and finally they kind of line up, you know, two ends of, of a place. And Abner calls out and he goes, "What? How long are we going to do this? Listen, how long are we going to do this? Yeah. Okay, because it's more like this. Joab, we're related. Okay, remember, we're Jews." Remember, we used to be on the same side, and then this thing happened with our masters, our kings, Saul and David. That's their fight. It's not our fight, okay? It's not our fight. Uh, I mean, do we really want to just cut each other down like this? Joab goes, You know what, Abner? As the Lord lives, if you didn't say that, we, we, our, my guys would have kept going. Yeah, and we'd all be just dying out here. Just like what happened with the 12 on 12. Yeah, yeah you know, this is stupid. Okay. Sound the show far. Whatever the, the thing was at the time means we're done. Go home. Really? That's it? We're done? Good, I'm hungry. And <laughs> off they go. Everybody goes back to their homes. And why don't they do that earlier? Sometimes it takes so long for people to go, why are we doing it? Why are we doing this? And, and again, I, we pray against the civil war. Mm -hmm. Because at one point, if, if something happens, if there's civil, I, I, there will be, I believe, civil unrest. Mm -hmm. And there will be coming back and forth. It's not going to be one side at this time. I just, I know too much. I know you all do too. I mean, the re reality is, just to speak frankly, you can't find any common ammo on any shelf anywhere. And I've talked to other uh, state leaders. They all say the same thing. Nobody's got ammo. Your common, most used, you know, firearm and rifle ammo. It's just not there. Shotgun shells. Go bird hunting. But that's about it, you know. Hmm. You know, all, all your reloading supplies are gone. I mean, what does that tell you? Hmm. I mean, and we also know um, the, uh, the manufacturers, um, including Black Hills Ammo, you know, usually they've got federal quotas to fill first. And I'm just saying that everybody's been asking for ammo, and that's, there's nothing left. It's because they're ramping up. And you pray that they're, they're, people are smarter, that, that whoever would like to start the fight will decide not to throw the first punch because they might really understand, you know what? We're not the only one ramping up, getting ready. And this could cost our lives. And do we really want to die like the 12 on 12? I mean, I mean do we want to? I mean, it, and at one point, if, if there ever is civil conflict, you hope at one point people go, we're all Americans, right? And they finally go, can we find something in common? I mean, once again, can we find common ground? Can we, can we get past certain things and, and not do this, not let it lead to this? Because for some reason, somebody always takes the initiative and thinks the way to solve this is war. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a time for war. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Bible says so, and there's a time for war. But usually it's because somebody else started it first. Hitler starts it. I'm glad we finally got involved. Yeah, fine. What if we never did? Huh. All of Europe would be speaking German, probably. 
You know? So, say more about it, but I won't. So, we're grateful for a ceasefire. Uh, but uh, the story continues 29 to the end. Somebody, please. Abner and his men then went through the Arba all that night. So they crossed the Jordan, walked all morning, and came to Mahan Name. Then Joab returned from following Abner when he had gathered all people together. 19 of David's servants, besides Azahel, were missing. But the servants of David had struck down many of Benjamin and Abner's men, so that 360 men died. And they took up Asahel and buried him in his father's tomb, which was in Bethlehem. Then Joab and his men went all night until the day dawned at Hebron. All right, so you got it. So Joab, he is with uh, his own troop and you know battalion, I should say, and they're they've got their own little mission, and their own they're, they're, where they are. They've got to get back home. You know their way. Other folks who were closer to where uh, the, the original battle was, apparently, uh, you know, they came upon some of the slain, buried them. They, you know, of course, they, they came upon Asahel. They buried him. This is Joab's brother. Joab does not know he's been killed yet. Uh, and then we're told that you know uh, the the tribe of Judah, Joab's uh, men, uh, cut down 360 uh, of. Um, uh, Abner's army. And then we get to chapter 3. And um, uh, somebody please the first five verses. Well, you know what? Never mind. Because there's a lot of names that you're going to go, huh? <laughs> so I, I'll simply point out that if you look at it, it simply says that there is a long war between the house of Saul, who's dead, but it's just saying, you know, Israel, the, the tribes, okay, uh, and David's house, meaning everybody follows him, his army, the whole thing. So there's already two kingdoms, all right, you know, going, um, and it says it, it's just a long war. So we're just simply told, even though that one little skirmish stopped, you know, it was not going to take for a long, long time. But during all that time, uh, you're told, verses uh, 2 uh, through 5, that David has a total of five wives, their names are mentioned, and each one bears a son. Well, I'm sure more than a son. But again, it's only the sons that are mentioned. Because that's just kind of how it was back in the day. Our apologies to the ladies here. Uh, that was the, you know, that's, that's how things were recorded. Talking to him. Mentioned the men, etc. So here's all the boys who were born. And, uh, but we know later David had a bunch, a bunch of more sons and a bunch of daughters. You know, lots and lots of them. But they're not mentioned. Um, but uh, at this point, that's, that's where he stands in his household, and then, uh, 6 through 11, somebody? Now it was so, while there was a war between the house of Saul and the house of David, that Abner was strengthening his hold on the house of Saul. And Saul had a concubine whose name was Rizpah, the daughter of Aiah. So Ishbosheth uh, said to Abner, Why have you gone into my father's concubine? Then Abner became very angry at the words of Ishbothoth and said, Am I a dog's head that belongs to Judah? Today I show loyalty to the house of Saul, your father, to his brothers and to his friends, and have not delivered you into the hand of David. And you charge me today with a fault concerning this woman? Mm -hmm. May God do so to Abner and more also if I do not do for David as the Lord has sworn to him to transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul and set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah from Dan to Beersheba. And he could not answer Abner another word because he feared him. <laughs> okay. You see where that happened? Yeah. So uh, a key verse is um, in verse, uh, verse 6. Abner was making himself strong in the house of Saul. Take that to mean he was becoming a threat yep. to the guy who he put in charge of the kingdom, Ishbal, son of Saul. Hmm. So, uh, it, you could, we're not told why uh, Ishbal accuses 
Abner of sleeping with his dead father's, one of his dead father's concubines. But I think it's the verse before that cues you in. Abner was becoming powerful. powerful. And I wonder if this was uh, Ishbaal's way to Excuse. hold him down, keep him under his thumb, intimidate him or something. Hey, I got, I got, I got, you know, info on you. Okay, I got something on you. I got goods on you. But he doesn't actually. He, he, and this is who he, he got nothing on. Him. He goes, Why would you accuse me of that? I didn't sleep with her. Okay. And what's he say? Uh, I've never been so insulted in my life. Buddy, you know why you're sitting where you are? You want to know why nobody's touched you yet? You know why David and his men haven't killed you yet? I've been watching, I've been guarding you, I've been guarding you, and taking care of you, and you, Abner's irate. Did you catch this? He is so mad, wouldn't you? I mean, he's mad. He goes, I'm gone. What, what I have promised to your daddy, I'm not promising to David. Because you know what? I already know. David, the kingdom has been promised to him. We all know that. You actually knew that. Why did I even put you where I put you? Later, and he goes. And he's going to go and he's going to go work with David, huh? I like your version better than that. You like my version? <laughs> yeah. I, I like it better. Okay. But I mean, right? Yeah. It's kind of like how that, how that would play out today. That's in my imagination. All right. So uh, this is what happens, and, and of course, you know, Abner says Abner couldn't answer. He couldn't. He had nothing to say because now he's scared. So I just again, I just think of Ab Ab Abner is talking, and 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 you know, and Ishbal's like, just tell you, worry me. You know, what's he do? Uh, you know, oh, that that didn't work out very good. <laughs> that backfired. And. Uh, so uh, uh, then, uh, 12 to 16, please. Then ben. Abner sent messengers to Honest to have to say to David, Whose land is it? Make an agreement with me, and I'll help you bring all Israel over to you. Good, said David. I'll make an agreement with you, but I demand one thing of you. Do not come into my presence unless you bring Michael, daughter of Saul, when you come to see me. Then David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, son of Saul, demanding, Give me my wife, Michael, then whom I betrothed to myself for the price of a hundred Philistine horse. So Ishbosheth gave orders and had her taken away from her husband, Alkiah son of Lai. Her husband, however, went with her, weeping behind her all the way to the house. <laughs> it's not funny. You see that? And <laughs> Abner said to him, go back home. So went back. Ah! This is the ancient version of Days of Our Lives. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? Days of Our Lives. That's so Okay, so, oh, so what? I can't make this stuff up, right? So, you know, Abner sends word, um, you know, because last thing David knows, they're in war. So Abner, here, you guys, you're my servants, you know. You go there, you tell them, Abner, I bring, we bring word on behalf of Abner, you know, please, you know, uh, and I'm sure they send it really fast to guard their own lives. Uh, he actually wants to come to your side. You know, he had a fallout with uh, Ishbal. Okay? I'm listening. Go ahead. Um, things aren't going well. He got insulted. Da da da. Feelings were hurt. Blah blah blah. Uh, and he knows anyway that you're, you're supposed to be the king. God made it clear uh, you're the next king. And he wants to help with that. <laughs> really? Hmm. <laughs> And David goes, um, all right, uh, but and I don't know if this is a proof thing, but he goes, uh, okay, on one condition, <clears throat> you return, what, my, my, my wife. wife, right, that Saul 
gave to this other guy, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Uh, okay. Once he once he got mad at David, David left, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's what's going to happen. And as she is being brought uh, to him, which oh, she's yanked out of this guy's house. You know the guy, and they've been married for who knows how long now. I don't know. Does Michael love this guy? She was ordered to be this guy's wife by her dad's soul. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Was she happy? I'm finally getting out. Get out of jail free card. And she can't wait. But the husband's just, it's, hilarious. it's just so pitiful. He's just moping <laughs> at a distance. Oh, yeah. You know, it's funny. And, and um, you know, <laughs> and then, yeah. you know, throwing rocks at him. Get out of here like you would a dog. And, <laughs> And off he goes, and um, now watch this, it's, um, 17 to uh, 21, somebody. After he sent words to the elders of Israel, saying, From some time past, you have been seeking David as king over you. Now then bring it about, for the Lord has promised David, through my servant David, I will save my people Israel from the hand of the Philistines and from their enemies. Abner also spoke directly to the Benjamites. Then Abner went to tell David at Hebrew, all that Israel and the whole house of Benjamin were ready to do. When Abner came with twenty men to David at Hebrew, David made a feast for Abner, and the men who were with him. Abner said to David, Let me go and rally all Israel to my lord the king, in order that they may make a covenant with you, and that you may reign over all that your heart desires. Mm. So David dismissed Abner, and he went away. <laughs> okay, so Abner, he sent word to the elders of Israel, not of Judah, of Israel. The, right, the, all the tribes he's leaving behind now, and what's he saying? Better side with God. Turn it over with David. Listen, I'm leaving. You want to come with? He goes, you know, for some time you've been seeking David as king over you, but Saul wouldn't let it happen, because y'all know it. Y'all love David more than Saul. Remember that? Don't you remember? We all loved David. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Wait, we all loved it. Oh, David was the man. Oh, yeah, he killed Goliath. And then he, he, he fought all these battles against the Philistines. Oh, we owe our lives to this guy. Why have we been seeing him as the bad guy? Because Saul, the nutcase, demon guy, who was in charge, kind of was saying all this stuff, and telling us how bad David was, and we started to buy it. And now he's croaked. So I guess we're free from that. I mean, you imagine, it's very interesting what's going through these guys' heads. All the leadership now. Sit again? Yeah. Sounds like Yeah, sounds like CNN. So, you know, uh, uh, and I'm glad you, you get there because you think about how often we have watched people flip on people uh, because of something that's been said and repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated, and repeated, and repeated, and repeated until finally people believe it. Yeah. And it, it's amazing. And it's amazing where it's led our country. I mean, the whole country should be grateful for yeah. President Donald Trump. Yeah. They should be, I mean, oh my goodness. Yes. It's amazing how grateful they should be. But, you know, they've been told ever since he got in of how terrible he is, and that's all you've heard, and things out of context and all. But either way. Promises made. Promises right? yeah. kept. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, Abner spoke directly to the Benjamites. Again, this is Saul's house, okay, uh, Ish, Ishbaal's tribes, tribe, um, uh, and, and then Abner went to tell David all that Israel and the whole house of Benjamin were ready to do. So what it's telling you is that he, the, he oh, really? Wow, I mean, this is really important. It's a, this is about to happen? They're, they're getting towards a place now where David is actually going to see the fulfillment of this the prophecy over him that he's going to be the next king and it's like okay uh things are starting to line up and uh, uh 
But there's some housekeeping that needs to be done. There's something David didn't know, and it's about to, to happen. Kind of backfires on him. And it's a 22. Uh, if somebody would read 22 to a 30, please. Just then, David's men and Joab returned from a raid and brought with them a great deal of plunder. But Abner was no longer with David and Hebron, because David had sent him away, and he had gone in peace. When Joab and all the soldiers with him arrived, he was told that Abner, son of Ner, had come to the king, and that the king had sent him away, and that he had gone in peace. So Joab went to the king and said, What have you done? Look, Abner came to you. Why did you let him go? Now he is gone. You know Abner, son of Ner, he came to deceive you and observe your movements and find out everything you are doing. Joab then left David and sent messengers after Abner, and they brought him back from the wall of Sirach, but David did not know it. Did you say through? Uh, 20, uh, 30. I'm sorry. Now when Abner returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside into the gateway as though to speak with him privately. And there, to avenge the blood of his brother, Hashel, Joab stabbed him in the stomach, and he died. Later, when David heard about this, he said, I and my kingdom are forever innocent before the Lord concerning the blood of Abner, son of Ner. May his blood fall upon the head of Joab and upon all his father's house. May Joab's house never be without someone who has a running sore or leprosy, or who leans on a crutch, or who falls by the sword, or who lacks food. <laughs> Joab and his brother Abishir mur murdered Abner because he had killed their brother, Hashel, in the battle of Gibeah. So, you got that? No sooner does Abner leave David's presence, and they've got a deal, they shook hands, he's off. Pretty much Abner's going, I'm going to deliver the rest of the tribes to you, buddy, and then we're going to make you king. Then who shows up? Joab. Joab and his buddies arrive, finally, from their mission. Uh, Joab gets wind of what? Okay. Sit again. He wants revenge. He sure does. Okay. Um... Of the big picture. Yeah, okay. Uh, when he finds out that Abner was there, uh, Abner sees, or Joab sees Abner as like a double spy, double agent, right? Not to be trusted. Don't, don't, David, you know who this guy is. You know, he's faking it. He just wants inside information. He wants to find out your weaknesses. Why in the world would you let him come so close? Why did you let him go? That was your moment, right? We're at war with these guys. Um, and then what? Say it again. Joab sends a little word out. What's he say? Yeah, hey, uh, uh, we forgot to want to give you something. Uh, can you come back for a moment? Okay. Um, comes back, Joab meets with him aside, a little private, hey buddy, you know, sorry about what happened, you know, back there, you know, and then gives it to him, kills him, and uh, then what? Word, of course, now comes back to, to David, what's David's response? Right? Okay, David's first response is, Okay, now it's a little weird because he's I don't see him grieving. I am a kingdom are forever innocent for the Lord concerning the blood of that. Okay, now maybe he was grieving. I, I I would hope he's going, What? You know? Abner died? I mean, now he you know hadn't been buddies with Abner, but you know, you, you the first thing on his mind was I I had nothing to do with this, it's Joab's fault, and they pretty much called down a curse on Joab's family and lineage, right? Um, was that, do you think that was good? Uh, was that, was that fair? I, I don't know. I mean, obviously Joab was missing some information. I mean, there's some stuff David could have said. 
you know, about Abner and why Abner was really there. Maybe, I don't know, maybe try to help yeah, talk Joab into it. I don't know about Joab, but unless he killed yeah, his brother. Right. You know, I was going to say, what about what right. jo Joab's, his lineage? You'd go. Abner was the lead general on you, the other side. Exactly. You'd go. Friends. Yeah. Right. And, and um, does David know that Abner killed Joab's brother? Say. <laughs> not that we saw. Oh, it doesn't say. It doesn't say. It doesn't say. I don't know how he could not know, but it doesn't say. It doesn't think I, I, I would, I would, you'd think he'd get that kind of a battle report. My general's brother was killed by the general of Saul's, you know, yeah. army. All right. Um, but still, um, what was David's, what were his faults in this? trying to disassociate himself with the same kind of stuff he's been doing forever. You know, he's like, wait a minute, now I'm in charge, so i got to clean up my act and not be a part of these. Who look at this? I don't know what he would call Not it. really. Joab's kind of what? a hothead. We know that from way back when Joab wanted to kill Saul. Yeah. He's kind of been a hothead a long time. Shut up! You I mean, yeah, he's been him. with David, but, he but needs Joab that he's a warrior in charge. Yeah. Of course, Abner was a good general too. So. Yeah. But they ain't gonna get along. No. Nope. Ever. Abner's fault is he didn't listen to the guy males. in the first place. Two <laughs> alpha males. Well, that's yeah. why they're generals. <laughs> you know, One had to die. This is like days of our lives. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Right? You can't make this kind of stuff up. Oh. Uh, so. I don't know that David was. David's not innocent. But no. no. You know, he was like, oh no. It was, it was probably in the emails. He didn't know anything about it. I think he knew everything about it. <laughs> he was in the emails. <laughs> he yeah. knew that he couldn't have yeah. both those guys alive under his command at Mark's the same really time. One of them had to die. Yeah. As long as it wasn't his fault. I, I'm clean of this. <laughs> right. well, I appreciate the way that David always reacted to everything throughout the pack, how like his gut instinct was like, you know what, I'm going to snap back at these people. Well, you would think, okay, this is my lead general, and his brother was killed in a really harsh way by this guy right here, and he's obviously already angry about that. I should probably tell him, don't kill him. Except he just said, it didn't say that he said anything about it. He just was like, Whatever. How can you not expect a guy that you've been with this whole time to not have the same reaction that you always had? And you didn't say anything to him to not like, calm down, we got a plan, don't do anything. He was no. also thinking Abner had to, he was bringing the other elders to him. He bringing the rest of the tribes to him. He's like, oh, don't screw that up. I need to have everybody <laughs> under one kingdom. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think uh, you're. Uh, I think y'all got it right. Um, you know, we're we're nearing eight o'clock, so we'll wrap up here at the end of three. Um, I, I look at that and I go, okay, David was never um, uh, mentioned as being like the perfect manager, great supervisor, HR department, great. You know, if you feel killed wrong. Um, you know, he's he's got his own you know quirks and weirdnesses, and, and you watch him. You know, sometimes he makes a good decision. Sometimes he's kind of rash and and uh, you know. He ain't perfect. You know, uh, he's not Jesus in the Old Testament. So he's going to make mistakes. And there was an inference that he uh, trusts Abner quickly. Now, he's got history with Abner. Remember, he used to be on Saul's side. He was, David was the main battle. He was the, 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 the general, really. You know, and Abner was, was maybe his right hand. Abner took over when David left. So David's got history. But Joab has history with Abner. And Joab, it didn't occur to him, uh, maybe Abner killed my brother because my brother was stupid. My brother was alone. My brother went after Abner by himself. Apparently he, he was literally alone. It was a one on one. We were not in agreement at that time. We were fighting. So Joab's got no room for, um, you know, some 
yeah, critical thinking, you know, uh, what is in the best interest of everybody? Do I want to keep Abner alive? See, Joab needs to somehow separate the personal wound of he killed my brother, this guy killed my brother, with, um, I know who this guy is. Um, my brother went after him. My brother was picking the fight. My brother lost. My brother should have had backup. But he puts it all on Abner instead of seeing the value of Abner. Um, David, I think, he, he, he failed there. He definitely could have made some peace, maybe. Uh, maybe he could have reasoned with both men. But there's the inference that when he welcomed Abner so quickly, and Joab's not there, you think, you're Joab. You risked your life. You've been fighting, you and your boys, etc. You just show up. You just got back into town. You're probably thirsty as can be. Your feet are killing you. Uh, you probably got some wounds. Um, you're exhausted. You're hungry. You walk in and, oh, guess what? Abner's on our side and blah, 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 blah. And he's like also going to be one of David's top guys. Because the inference is now Abner is like one That's of David's right, military leaders. You're Joab. Joab. Yeah. David's mind. Right. You're going, uh, what do you think? If you're Joab, see, that's, that's not how you bring somebody into the team. You actually use team members to talk about how do we bring somebody into the team. Do you think this is a good addition? And you together talk about, you know, you get everybody, you get wisdom in a multitude of counsel. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's just too much for Joab. And David ends up losing Abner. Now, how does he explain that to the tribes that Abner was gathering and winning over? Because the last thing they heard was from Abner directly, hey, David's welcoming me, we're all going over, who's with me, let's go, all right! All of a sudden, Abner dead, what? Joab, David's commander, David's killed commander. Abner? Okay, do you think that set things back? Mm -hmm. One step forward, two steps back. Joy has Ah! Okay, uh, David needed to have some some foresight. Yeah. To really sit and think about it. Not, I, you know, some some people are um, impulsive. Mm -hmm. David's impulsive, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know if it was the the sound of wow, I'm going to finally become king. I don't know if that was a flesh buzz for him and Abner's going to rally the whole nation to me. Yahoo! And all of a sudden, he signs him up really quick, you know, without the interview and, and the references and all that from former employer. And now he's, and then he's claiming innocence. And so I look at that beyond what's there at face value, and I say, no, actually, David is responsible. Mm -hmm. David set Abner up, <coughs> not purposely, but on accident. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he just needed to help. He needed to help everybody understand uh, and bring them in, have a discussion, see if he could make some amends, get these guys, can they, can they make healing? Because that's a microcosm of the nation mm -hmm. at the moment. The Joab and Abner, the nation had been divided. They've been in war. This is fresh. Um, things take time, right? A vision takes time to be caught by other people. And if you're in management, let's say, you can't just... Here's what we're doing. Here's the new guy, you know, on the team. Now he's doing this, and then you've been the one waiting for the raise or the, I, I thought I was going to get that promotion, and you're giving it to this person, you know, and all that. You, you create a lot of bad blood. You're reading it. So there's actually some leadership, leadership principles in the Bible right here yeah. of, you know, practically speaking, how do you get a team together, let alone an army that needs to 
fight side by side and stand against the real enemy, the Philistines, who are part of the Canaanites all around you. I mean, if you can't get it together, and here's my fear for the United States. If we can't get it together, and if we end up in some sort of civil conflict, we're surrounded. We are sitting ducks for a foreign force. Yes, we are. Few, few foreign forces. And I would not be surprised if this, in fact, I guarantee this civil conflict was created on purpose by certain puppet masters who want our downfall and they know this is how you do it. And you create these divisions, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You put certain people in place. You, 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 see, you sow seeds of discontent, you tell a storyline, you, you um, sensationalize um, certain things, um, you just make them a lot bigger than they are, uh, or you just focus on whatever. It is what you've been watching with what we've been seeing, and it's only mounted, mounted, and it's now just becoming this volcano about to erupt. And if it does, then what? That's the concern, and I know you share that. A lot of people share that concern. We just don't want to be like that. And again, I think it's amazing where we find ourselves in the Bible, and I do not choose to, to do this. Um, you know, I, I, I cannot see the future and, and, um, and arrange that tonight that we'd be in this chapter, talk about this thing on the eve of the election of the United States. There is a God, and God guides His church, and God guides us through the Word. Mm -hmm. And ironically, what we just read was, huh. Huh. Mm -hmm. People say the Old Testament is not relevant today. <laughs> <laughs> they say the whole thing about the Bible, but my goodness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right? Yeah. What, what Bible did Jesus quote? Jesus quoted the Bible all the time. What did he yeah. quote? The Old Testament. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He was the primary quarter of the Old Testament. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paul quoted. Anytime you heard scripture quoted in the New Testament, they're quoting what they called the Bible. That was their Bible. Oh, it was relevant in their day. Still, oh, today. Yeah. Yes, it is. So, so um, thank you, God, for meeting us in your word tonight. Yes, Lord. Uh, thank you for opening our eyes to what is on the page. And we pray, Lord, that we can avoid being a bunch of stupid um, citizens that um, chop each other down needlessly and, um, and hold grudges that really are somebody else's fight from be before our time. And um, that we would not turn on each other and, and become weak and vulnerable to uh, any other power wanting our demise. Mm -hmm. So once again, we ask for a miracle. Mm -hmm. And we know you could do it if it would be your will. Mm -hmm. And you would bring peace upon this land. Mm -hmm. And maybe we could have a not just a momentary, but a long-term ceasefire like Abner and Joab did. Yeah. We finally realized we're, we're all Americans. What, what are we fighting for? But um, I fear we're a little past that at the moment. But you can do anything. And Lord, we, we just pray you would bring us to a moment of being clear-sighted, calm, cool-headed. And... Um, we would see and realize quickly who has been playing us. Yes, Lord. Dividing us, setting us against each other and the agenda behind it and that those who have been duped by it will wake up yes, Lord. and um, get free from that and that those of us who have not been duped by it will not hold a grudge. But we would quickly make men's and trust that they would begin to see things the way we see things. Which we believe is correct, not perfect, but correct. And these are the things we ask 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.